Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am to react to this new uh, video from the, you know, from the Black Seed and oh my god, I just finished, um, you know, doing the video where uh, Juliet actually uh, discovered the, the young Usman Toure and this new video popped up, you know, and I'm like, what, where, where, where has he been all my life? Where has, I just discovered him like yesterday, <laughs> guys, and I'm like, oh my goodness, for some reason he never came to any of my timelines, and I'm so happy to be able to react to this new video, uh, you know, from Black City. And thank you so much, Juliet, and your team for bringing you know such powerful videos um, and inspiring the young people. So on today's video, it's an exclusive interview by Black Seed, you know, and so they're interviewing Usman Toure, the young protege, and I I think he looks like PLO Lumumba. So I believe that he's the next um, PLO Lumumba. And so, yeah, so let's get straight into this video. And I'm so excited to be able to react to this one as well. Let's go. Black Seed family, Black Seed family, Black Seed family. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, look who's here, the prodigy, the one, the one and only, mm -hmm. only, Osman Torre. He is, from now, my official <laughs> hero. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to you. I am happy that you know that you got to discover this young man. You can just tell how destiny goes and you will be part of this young man's life. Uh, all your life, Juliet, and I think you will grow to say, I discovered him, I'm the one who brought him up to, you know, to the world, and this is just um, beautiful, you're like his second mom, and so uh, it makes me feel so emotional, because he's a wonderful young man, so thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much, thank what you. you are doing for Gambia. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for what you are doing Africa. Thank you for what you are doing and being an example for the youth Thank you. of the future. Thank you. I've so been watching your interviews. I've seen the tweets from Julius Malemba. <laughs> I've seen the comments from Piero Lumumba. And I've heard, you know, comments even from Ambassador Jeff today mm. about you. And I am just so, so impressed as everybody is. My phone hasn't stopped ringing about you. So what we did is we put our post. I said to people that we were going to interview you today. So um, I've got some Black Sit questions. These are questions from me, but these are questions from Black Sit subscribers who are championing the cause for you. Osman Ture, Osman Ture, Osman Ture. Okay. <laughs> Right, so the first question is from Farming is the Future. What inspired him to study the Rwandan development model? Oh, guys, yeah, the Rwandan development model, Rwanda is, I would love to go to Rwanda. And I have two countries in Africa in my bucket list and I must visit is the Gambia and Rwanda because apparently Rwanda is on another level you know, and Africans, uh, most African countries are actually looking up to the Rwandan development model because they have done so much. Apparently, it's the cleanest, you know, um, it's the cleanest country in Africa, you know, and and it has the development model is on another level and they've done such a tremendous work. So, yeah, I would love to travel to Rwanda. So if you know, by the way, of any Rwandan YouTubers, because I haven't seen any yet that you would like me to you know, to uh, to react to, let me know in the comment section below and I will make sure that I go and and see them and look them up. Yeah, thank you very much. And the issue is that uh, when we look into what is going on in Rwanda, it's actually a miracle and something that is uniquely Rwandese. Mm -hmm. In a sense that they came from a genocide back mm -hmm. in 1994, the country was at zero. They were able to set a pattern of development that is today uniquely theirs and everybody in Africa today celebrates Rwanda mm. for that wonderful model of development. So if African countries also want to move 
-hmm. They need to look into things that are uniquely theirs. Decisions and policies, laws that are well informed by the African reality. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what is going on in Rwanda. Okay. Once we can have this in all over Africa, because, you know, what is going on now is what we need. Mm -hmm. The Gambia today needs a transformation. A, a transformation in which it is going to be well informed by the realities of the Gambian continent, mm -hmm. uh, by the Gambia. Mm -hmm. So making it possible that we inform our colleges, we inform those in charge of steering our own affairs with the reality of the African continent. And that is why Rwanda is making it there. Let me say this. Development always have to come from within. Yeah. You don't import development. Yeah. You don't expect individuals who don't live in Africa, who don't belong to the African continent, to bring the development that we desire. It has to be initiated by us, and it right. has to be developed by us. Right. And that is what I saw in the world. Yeah, and I, I believe, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's what he was going to say. I believe that's what is happening in Rwanda. Rwanda has come from afar, from the genocide, to now constructing the country from zero, and actually from zero, and seeing that it is now actually, you know, uh, all African countries are looking up to them. It's crazy. And the fact that Rwanda has been, um, you know, reconstructed by Rwandas, you know, nobody else, you know, so meaning that it has created, um, you know, employment for, you know, for the Rwandese people. It has also given them confidence because they see they're capable of doing things themselves without help from, from the outside. And so, yes, it has to come from within, you know, because what is made in the country remains in the country. It's as simple as that. So I see where he's coming from, and I agree 100%. And I also want to see the same thing going on in countries like Senegal, going on in, in countries like the Gambia, in countries like Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. it in Liberia, in Malawi, everywhere in the continent, mm -hmm. making sure that we can get to the development that we desire, channeling this economic growth that we talk about, mm -hmm. channeling the numbers that we talk about in the financial sector, mm -hmm. talking about the GDP every now and then. We want to see this in the human development. We want to see this in both infrastructure and also making it possible for the individual to realize this, seeing that happiness in the African individual. So to do that, we need to understand what yeah. really works for us mm -hmm. and not to borrow policies that are on Eurocentric mm -hmm. views. So, it should be African policies yeah. and African in initiative, yeah, yeah. Exactly. African that's, that's ingenuity, yeah, that's Africa in African intelligence yeah. for Africa. Sure. Yeah? Sure. So, that's, that's great. No more uh, brain drain, you know, because if our leaders actually show the younger generation that they can do it, you know, if they give them the, you know, the necessary resources, and you know and educate the young people and high quality education then of course the young people will stay and they will develop the country 100 percent so no more brain drain great i mean that'll be a model and he he says do you think it will work in the gambia yes now why in fact if you look at rwanda for instance the gambia have been taking policies from all over the world and it never worked for them yeah the problem is we find it difficult as african countries countries to try something within and that mm -hmm. is seeing what work in various African countries and then bringing it out there for other African countries to give a shot. Uh, many countries around the world today are excelling, they are doing extremely well and their inspiration is something that they got from the pioneers of the real mm -hmm. African, Pan-African, uh, Pan-Africanism and the real African model. So if Singapore is doing it out there, if China is doing it out there, back in 1965, they have the same economic growth with countries in Africa. Cool. So what do they got right and what did we get wrong? Yeah. Those are some of the fundamental questions mm -hmm. that we have to pose. So it Yeah, and I believe that's the reason why, um, I mean, we need to go back to the drawing board. You know, it's not about, um, you know, borrowing from other people. It's just finding the identity of each country and, you know, growing from there. Because what works for another country does cannot you know systematically work for another country so i agree it can work in, our, uh, in the gambia of course because looking at the realities in rwanda looking at the status of that particular country uh -huh. the way in which the transformation was done 
That is exactly what the Gambia needs today. How do we make sure that we have a development agenda that is well informed by Gambians? Yes. Going back to look into the agricultural sector in the Gambia, yes. we can do it. Studies have shown that in Jali, Pacha and Sapo irrigation alone, from growth, like from the farming itself, to the factory can employ around 1 million people. Of we course. do not have 1 million people in need of job today in the Gambia. So why can't we try things exactly. that work for us? The agricultural sector is there. Our fishing industry is here. Why should we just allow it to be in the hands of individuals who doesn't actually are here for the interests of the African continent? That is exactly what we are saying. Let us read what works for us. Let mm -hmm. us understand the real African system and then set a pattern of development that is uniquely ours, as Rwanda did it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I mean, one of the things that I do admire about what Rwanda has done is that it's completely reinvented itself, you know, from, from the bottom, if you like, up. Yes. You know, because they have been, been ravaged by war. Mm -hmm. And to see what they have now become, regardless of all the other side political issues, I have to look at what it is. And what I see from when Woda Maya went there is absolutely amazing. I remember seeing a picture of him. I, I watched a video when he actually sat in the gym and was eating food. That's how clean the place was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, there's a lot, lots for us to learn. And the Okay, so I guess I will look up that video from Woda Maya. He was in Wanda. All right, so I will check it out because I believe that, um, wow, yeah, mm. The, 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 the Rwandese really, I would say kudos because you've done a great job by building up your country from ground zero to being an African model. So, again, good job. The, the fact that the individuals, the, the, the members of society got involved in the, the cleaning of their mm. nation, got involved in the decision making of their nation and was involved in... Um, for example, repealing some of the uh, colonial laws that existed. You know, I think that these are all progressive norms that need to be, you know, encapsulated within um, the African conversation and narrative moving forward. So um, the next question I've got is, how would you like to see Africa in general and the Gambia portrayed? Yes, I, I want to see an Africa. And this is from Haifa. Haifa, Haifa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I want to see... Uh, uh, the Gambia and Africa being portrayed in a very fair manner. Yeah. To understand that mm. we have a we have individuals that live within this continent and have a right. And let me tell you that he, I think that his choice of words when he says fair, that's exactly uh, the term. It's fair. And not just because Africa has been portrayed for years, for years, for centuries as you know, just poor, poverty, dying children. But for some reason, these things exist because the charity organizations have to make money out of Africa in a way. So I'm sorry to say so, but it's a reality of the thing. So he used the term in a fair manner. OK, so say things as they are, you know, if they, they're doing great in tourism, in agriculture, you know, the, the economical uh, development is doing great. Urbanism is perfect and showcase those things as well. And not just show this, you know, the, 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 you know, just bad things about Africa. And I guess that's why the younger generation now is just saying enough is enough. This is not Africa and we need to show Africa in a fair way. So I absolutely agree with what he just said. So let's just go a little bit uh, back. The Gambia and Africa being portrayed in a very fair manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To understand that we have a we have individuals that live within this continent and have a right to enjoy the dignity of man. Mm, yeah. And that is to live, to be recognized, and to be accepted wherever they are. It doesn't matter whether we have a different color with other sets of human mm. beings or not. We need to be recognized as a nation. We need to be recognized as a continent. And that self-dignity, we need to earn it at the international level, mm -hmm. starting with the United Nations itself. Right. Now, how do we do this? It has to start from within us. How do we understand one another? How do we accept one another? How does tolerance work within our various societies and etc.? Mm -hmm. Who are those that we accept to move with? Who are those that are in line with the same agendas? Who are those in line with the same spirit? Who are those that hold to the civilization and the culture of the African continent? That is exactly what we need to see. And that is the kind of picture that I would want to 
see the Gambia and Africa being portrayed. Mm. A civilized continent, a continent that is set for growth, a continent that is set for development, mm. and a continent that has all opportunities to be where it is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So, but for this to be attained, we need to understand that we need to set things at our own hands. Mm -hmm. We need to take our own responsibilities. It doesn't matter whether the people live in Africa here or not. Because to me, what matters is not living in Africa, but Africa living in you. Mm -hmm. So, whether you are in Af Did you hear that? Did you hear, did you hear that? Let's go back. It doesn't matter whether the people live in Africa here or not. Because to me, what matters is not living in Africa, but Africa living in you. So, Africa living in you. Africa living in you. Oh my goodness, I love it. And that's absolutely the case. Because if you love, you know, yourself, and so yourself being Africa or yourself being Ghanaian, Gambian, Tanzanian, you know, um, then of course you will do everything possible for people you love, for things you love, and so for the country that you love. So I agree with him 100%. Whether you are in Africa or you're living in the diaspora, as long as you are an African person, you must look inward. How do you make sure that you can invest in the continent? Mm -hmm. With the little that you have in the West, before you die and then the system takes everything from you, mm -hmm. why not invest in Africa? Right. Exactly. And so if you're in the diaspora, all you need to do is to approach your embassy. Uh, and, you know, the embassy, um, you know, just... You know, they, they have partnerships. I know for the Kenyan embassy, it's the Optiven, you know. So they have partnerships. And I actually have friends who've gone through Optiven and anyway, any other development programs where you can invest in Africa and things will be done correctly, um, you know, and you know there will be no fishy stuff going on. But um, yeah, so I agree with him 100%. There is a way that we can give back to, to Africa by investing in Africa. Create a little employment, yeah, exactly. you die and then your legacy continues. Mm -hmm, yes. But you don't have that. So these are the kind of values that we need to understand. Mm -hmm. They will have to be within a period of two years and then understanding the reality on the ground, learning about the culture on the ground, learning about you know that that society in which uh, we are an executor. It is, it is going to make it much easier because that is going to enable individuals to come in and invest. And it is also going to enable individuals to come in and then to understand more about the African value and the African culture. Mm -hmm. So once we have this opportunity, it is going to be much more easier for us to call on people to come and invest. Because that is why we are calling on people. Because as long as we do not invest in the continent by Africans, it's still going to be another threat. Because capital flight is a reality and it goes on every day. Mm -hmm. So for us to defeat that, we must control the core of our economy. And to control that, we need individuals to come in and invest. And those individuals have to be Africans, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. When you come and you're an African of African descent, your money stays. Yeah. Yeah, and it holds tight. Yeah. Uh, when you invest, it's because you're investing in yourself and you're investing in your own people. Mm -hmm. You're investing in your own country. You're investing in your own continent. And therefore, that investment has so much more value. So I appreciate your opinion, and um, it's something that I will be presenting. So your opinion was sought first, you see? Your opinion was sought first, because he is the one. Like I said, he is the one. So last but not least... Um, I yeah, just... he's the chosen one. He's the chosen one, 100%. And I will watch, uh, I will follow him, because I know in the next few years you'll be, uh, I think he's a future, you know, uh, president of the Gambia, 100%. Mark my words. 100%. just like to know if Adrian has any questions. No? He's shaking his head. So I'm going to just close up by saying thank you so much for your time. I know we have another interview to do and they're waiting patiently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just want to wish you every single success mm -hmm. and to say congratulations on getting that place in mm -hmm. that Rwandan University in Kigali. Mm -hmm. Well done. What's it called? Yeah, it's called the ULK University. ULK University. University of Leadership. Yeah, the universe leadership. Well, that's exactly where you need to be. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that you've been sponsored and supported in that program. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I know you said you was meeting with the UN. What was the outcome of that, quickly? Yeah, yeah you know, basically I'm meeting almost <laughs> all agencies now. So I met uh, some UN agencies, of course, and we are discussing about 
uh, programs and mm. I will be having an interview tomorrow with Ellen James and Salif, oh, yeah. and okay. the president of Life here, and we will be discussing African matters as well. Okay, and uh, lastly, just quickly before I go, um, I know that that's very important to me. How did it make you feel when you saw Julius Malemba tweet you and, and Piero Lamomba uh, no, no, no. talk about you? How did it make you feel? I had to go online and say, <laughs> <laughs> see, man, this was really true. But so. well, I was really, you know, impressed and mm. I feel so glad, you know, that the message was out there and people mm. receive it mm. and it as a continent. And I happened to speak on the phone with uh, Professor Piero Lumumba as well, even this morning, and that was a plus to me. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching him, I've been trying to... Oh, so things have just been skyrocketing for this guy since, I guess, the first interview, you know, she, I mean, he did with... Um, you know, with Juliet, and I'm so happy that, you know, you got to be discovered because you have so much, um, you know, to do for Africa and especially for the Gambia, and I'm so, so proud of you, uh, and I think uh, Usman Toure, you're going uh, places, and yeah, unbelievable. Master, when he speaks, and now that I can speak with him, <laughs> you know, it's a joy, and then yeah. it gives me belief, it gives me hope. Yeah, that the future in, of this continent is, is something that is promising. Of course, it's very, very promising. Yeah. On that note, let's say goodbye to the back of the yeah. Give us a like yeah. One, two, three, three. three. Smash that like button. Please comment down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. And thank you for being a Patreon donor. Thank you for being a supporter of Flaxit Channel. And thank you so much for watching and please keep supporting Osman. Yeah, Osman Troy, remember that name. Just remember that name. Thank you, Adrian, for doing the camera work. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. And um, thank you, Black Sip family. <laughs> yeah, guys. Oh, my goodness. This interview was just amazing. And I loved every single bit of this interview. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. And I hope you enjoyed my reaction. So if you did, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend. And make sure, uh, you know, you come back next time. And you can watch the other videos as well. And so until next time, bye, guys. Bye.